Let's now move on to the spectrum of a molecule which has a transition between both a rotational and a vibrational state. So in the previous video we showed that the energy levels for a rotating and vibrating molecule follow this equation, just a sum of the harmonic oscillator for vibrations and the rigid rotator for rotations. Moving that into uh, wave numbers, or from units of frequency into units of inverse distance, or wave numbers, that goes to the following equation here. Uh, just as a reminder, these quantum numbers, n start from zero, and our integers above that, j start from zero, and our integers above that, non-negative integers. And this frequency here, this omega bar equals one over two pi times the speed of light, over the square times the square root of the spring constant divided by the reduced mass of whatever diatomic molecule we're talking about. And the rotational constant B bar is Planck's constant over eight pi squared times the speed of light times the moment of inertia of that same molecule. Reduced mass following this equation here, product of the masses over their sums, and the moment of inertia being the reduced mass times the bond length squared. So now that we have that information, let's go on to look at what these inter what the transitions are. So for our selection rules, which tell us how n and j can change during a photon absorption or emission, we have that delta n change in the vibrational uh, quantum number is going to be plus one for absorption. And during the same absorption event, we're also going to have a change in the rotational state. Delta J is going to be plus or minus one. So what does this mean for us? This means that the frequency which we observe for the photon which was absorbed is going to be the energy of the state N plus one, J plus or minus one, depending on whether J is plus one or minus one minus the energy of the initial reference state uh, n and j. So this is going to give us two possibilities for what these individual omega bars values can uh, be. We can either have omega observed equals omega bar, which you can work through the algebra yourself that when you, at, when you do n plus 1 minus n for these energies, you're going to get omega as the result there. Plus, when you look at the difference between uh, j plus 1 and j for rotational states, the difference you're going to get there is 2b bar times j plus 1. And this is for delta j equals plus 1. And for the other case, where delta J equals minus one, we're gonna have the same omega bar for the increase in uh, N during that absorption, and then minus two B bar J for delta J equals minus one. So on the spectrum, this is going to give us two distinct cases. This is going to give us, in the top case, where delta J equals plus one, this is going to be called the R branch. It's going to be the branch which is higher in energy, so thus a higher frequency for what the absorbed photon is. And for delta J equals minus one, this is going to be called the P branch, which is going to be uh, less difference in energy and thus a lower uh, frequency for what the photon is that it absorbs. Okay, so given these two uh, results here, we can plot versus the frequency the type of spectrum we expect to see for a row vibrational spectrum. So this will just be some, our y-axis will just be some intensity of the peaks and our x-axis is going to be that observed frequency, omega bar observed. So in the middle here, I'm going to make a bar and I'm going to label this bar as omega bar as the frequency without any rotational change, so just the pure, ro the pure vibrational absorption would be this bar right here. So for this being called a row vibrational spectrum, 
both rotations and vibrations included. We would have two sets of bars in this spectrum. On our P branch, we would have bars starting there. That's not what I wanted. I wanted purple there. Okay, so bars, and they'll generally so you see them get larger and then smaller and then they kind of decay off into uh, nothing as you go over farther and farther to the left. And on the right here we have a set of bars which is kind of a mirror image almost but not quite and you see the same type of pattern. So overall you see this same display where you go from no bars to increasing, going down, increasing, going down. And these are the P branch and the R branch, which we had mentioned. Now the shape, why does it keep going to red? I want to go to yellow. The shape of these individual branches is due to the statistical mechanics of these transitions. So uh, we said that the separations between vibrational energy levels are quite large, so at room temperature almost all the molecules are in the ground vibrational state. So almost all of the molecules are going to be going from n equals 0 to n equals 1 for their uh, transition in this spectrum if delta n is plus 1. However, by the time we get down to rotational levels, Rotational levels are getting quite close in energy to each other, uh, rather than being in the infrared region, being in the microwave region, much closer together, much smaller frequencies. Um, there are actually quite a few rotational states which are populated at uh, at room temperature. So these are all diff these different peaks are all starting from a different uh, a different uh, starting level for J for the J say going from uh, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, etc. And these would be from uh, J going from uh, 1 to 0, 2 to 1, 3 to 2, 4 to 3, etc. Et as, we, as we see over there. And the reason that the biggest branch is not the, the bottom branch is due to uh, statistical mechanics, and it's due to the g degeneracy and those energy levels. The fact that we have that 2j plus 1 degeneracy for the number of states at each given uh, value of j. So there are, there's one state here, three states, five states, 7, 9, 11, 1, 3, 5, or sorry, this starting at this starts at j equals 1 and goes to 0. So this would be 3, 5, 7, uh, 9, etc. So that's just uh, a difference between how energy, how energy levels and degeneracy works. Uh, and that's all from statistical mechanics. And that's a topic for uh, a different set of videos entirely. So for now, we're just going to be focused on the fact that we have this row vibrational spectrum. The selection rule for absorption is delta n equals plus 1. And we can have delta j either go up 1 or down 1, giving us the p branch of minus 1 and the r branch of delta j equals plus 1.